sometimes it doesn't take too much to be right back there in the emotions. And how do you decompress? By learning the next scene for the next day. Because mm. um, there's no time to dwell. Mm. Uh, there's no time to sit back and go, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was good. That was great. You know, and pat, pat, pat each other on the back. Because yeah. you've got to do the same thing again tomorrow, you know, and, and don't let yourself down now. There are loads of uns, untold stories about mm. this country. Um, the Americans, you know, and, and a lot of the, the rest of the world, you talk to them about English culture and they know from the news, but in terms of our, our history, um, they can't pick too many things to point at, you know? So um, a role like this comes along. Um, Lenora, bless her, she's telling me about her father 12 years ago. Uh, 13 years ago and I knew at the time this was a story that needed to be told you know it's a true London story and uh, I love those I love I love when they're real I love when they have heart and soul I love when there's a message um, you know and this was one of those stories so it was only a matter of time um, I also as I said to her uh, a couple of months ago between you and me said to her that I'm going to play that role one day. <laughs> That's certainly what I was thinking in my head when she told me. She's telling me the story and I'm thinking, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's going to be me. Um, seriously, you know. So years later when it turned up, you know, it's one of those things where the signs, the signal had been put out and, and it turned up in my life and I'm very honoured and uh, very lucky. Um, and I hope we see more London stories, you know, more English stories mm -hmm. uh, for the world to look at and make up their own mind. What if Lenora had said no to you playing her dad? Well, um, <laughs> fortunately, well, that's when you realise, fortunately, you know, we had a good time 12 <laughs> years ago. This is why be careful, you know, when you're, you know, when you're on the way up, you know, yeah. be careful who you, who you talk to and how you talk to them. Because fortunately, we did get on. Um, and I got a lovely photograph from her and her mother on day one of shooting, you know, one of those kind of like, you know, good luck kind of things as if I wasn't under pressure already. Um, but, uh, no, it was lovely. It, it's, it's been a lovely kind of, um, completion of, uh, of that tale as it were, you know. And speaking of personal projects, Waleed, how much did Baghdad Central speak to you when you first heard about it? Similar to Sean, it was one of those things where all the stars were connecting. Um, but in a weird way, because when I first got the, uh, the audition, I, I was just very skeptical. I, I just felt like it was going to be another stereotype um, Middle Eastern role in Western you know, media. And then also, I, I had just lost my father like about three months before. So I was really not in a, in a good place and had a very negative filter. But once I kind of removed that filter and, and just uh, really you know, looked at the role and what was really behind it, it was everything that I was looking for. Um, and you know, I, I, uh, uh, I lived in Kuwait when Iraq invaded. So I was at 19 years old. And so I had the experience of living through a war and through an invasion. And um, so it was very personal to me, you know, and it was something that kind of catapulted my adulthood. So those are experiences you just never really forget. And uh, I, I just had a feeling like once I kind of, you know, removed that filter that, you know, nobody else can play this role. It's, um, you know, like I was... I was born to play this role. That, that was the feeling. Um, so yeah, very, very personal. How did you prepare mentally to return to a war zone, even though, of course, it wasn't a real one, but it, it was, it was? Well, unfortunately, the war's still going on. <laughs> so it was, I mean, all you had to really do is turn on the TV or just dig into what's happening in Iraq. And as, as late as January 2020, when, when we premiered at the BFI Film Festival, you know, before COVID, um, uh, demonstrations were breaking out at a 
you know, accelerated pace. And so we were like, wow, the story really needs to get out so that people understand um, the roots of, of what we're currently seeing today. And, and um, yeah, I mean, so it was, it was uh, uh, something that was very current. It was like a period piece that was in, within our lifetime. The writer who wrote the novel, which uh, the series is based on, Elliot Kola, uh, just a remarkable human being. And his wife is Iraqi. And he based my character really on his father-in-law. There's a lot of, of Khafaji in, in his father-in-law. So it was very personal to him too. And we got to meet and, and that just made it such an organic process. And then Stephen Bouchard, who's an incredible writer, just um, elevated everything. Uh, and so much of it was just something, you know, I, I just felt in the writing and in the nuance there were choices that I would make um, as the character, but also as Walid. So it just felt very, very natural. And then, and then it, most of it was just about connecting with this incredible cast that we had. Mm. Really incredible cast. Our directors were phenomenal, um, and it was just a real pleasure. As as hard work as it was, it was so much fun every day. All of these roles are so intense, actually. I was thinking if you're kind of playing that character all the way, you know, days at a time, how do you leave that behind if you have a day off or just going to sleep? I didn't really have a day off. Um, <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't. I, I think I had one day off. And so um, it's interesting that you asked that because actually um, I also... Um, lost my father a few years ago and so uh, these kind of uh, emotions are still you have to kind of scratch the surface too much you know before you know not the hulk but the you know it's it's like you're always angry it's it's one of those things where you know you you uh, certainly with a role like that you have to um go to certain places but 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 you don't have to go that far um but unfortunately you know when we think about loved ones and, and we think about the horrors of the planet uh, and whatever else, um, as I say, sometimes it doesn't take too much to be right back there in the emotions. And how do you decompress? By learning the next scene for the next day. Because mm. um, there's no time to dwell. Uh, there's no time to sit back and go, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was good. That was great. You know, and pat, pat, pat each other on the back because yeah. you've got to do the same thing again tomorrow, you know, and, and don't let yourself down now. Um, I don't know how the others think, but uh, that's certainly my take on, on, on uh, what we were doing. So I really didn't have a day off. I didn't have time to meditate, like let alone to have a day off. And, and, and I, that's usually how I ground myself. So it was, and it was trial by fire for me because this was my, let alone like not only my first lead, but my first series regular. So yeah. it was, uh, it was, and, and you know, uh, uh, so much of, uh, of that was the adrenaline that was driving me through it because of the excitement. And, and I didn't even feel like the responsibility, like I was like, bring it on. You know the responsibility that's this is what i've always wanted to play and it's a it's a it's a heroic arab role so um i was like okay great um my work is cut out and but it, it got to the point where and my wife was visiting to witness it but i just i just i, I got really burnt out and luckily the um uh, the head executive producer kate harwood was visiting morocco at the time and i told her i said I need a break, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 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 and one of the things that I think I learned in my journey on this was, and, and I think some of this is also in that anger post my father's death. And, and I think it was like, um, I, I didn't want to not be honest anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? I was done trying to please people. And I, I, it was really like, self-preservation but i'm so glad i asked for it because i did get uh, a break because there's a you know it's like you're you're mirroring what the character is going through and it's to a certain point where it's very helpful but then 
it, it, it becomes counterproductive. Like mm. I was starting to be angry on set. And I remember I actually spoke to the director of the second block, uh, Ben, and he was so supportive. And I said, listen, I'm, I cannot make uh, this afternoon's scene. I actually said I couldn't make the scenes today. This was after I was in the makeup trailer. And then, and he totally respected it. And he goes, do me a favor. Can you show up for this afternoon's uh, scene? And I said, yeah, I'm going to go and get some sleep. And I'll, and I'll be here this afternoon. So